What is going on, everyone? Shiva Sapata here with another Tesla accessory review. Today, we're taking a look at the most aesthetically integrated instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. This makes my Model 3, especially with my yoke wheel that I have here, a more of a Model S or X vibe with this giant instrument cluster in the front. And this is the upgraded version of the previous generation cluster that we reviewed from the same company. It is essentially the same product, but they have made some significant design changes to that. First of all, one of the biggest feedback we got on that first video, which by the way had so many views, thank you very much for supporting that video and providing all of your feedback. One of the biggest feedback that you all had was it does not have Android Auto compatibility. I showed you that it had CarPlay but no Android Auto. Now this has a seamless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capability. It has got that audio issue solved where now you can play your audio directly to the Tesla speaker using this. So if you have an Android Auto, again, CarPlay, all of that will just, the audio will just play from Tesla speaker. They also added one more material, which is the carbon fiber material here. Instead of just having that black and white uh, finish, now you can also get carbon fiber finish. And finally, they also added compatibility for older cars. So if you remember last time I said it was only good for the AMD cars, now it is also good for Intel, as well as they added that power issue that we had where we had to route the power to the front. Now you can connect it to a different source and I'll show you how to do all of that here in the channel. This product comes from TMA, which is Tesla Motor Accessory. They have a large selection of Tesla products on their website. And they did send this free of charge. I did not pay for it, but they're not sponsoring the channel. They're not paying us to make this review. This is 100% our honest opinion, and we are gonna put it through some extreme testing to let you know how we feel about this display. But if you do make a purchase using our discount code Shiva Tesla, you should be able to save significant amount of money, and in return, we might make a very small commission at no additional cost to you, which helps us bring more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much, let's get it started. So for the installation of this unit, uh, the full unit over here, this is super easy. It follows a typical uh, procedure like the previous units that we have seen uh, where they made a few changes. This is heavy duty metal, so is this. So there is not gonna be creaking or anything. That was the intention here, but let's see how it does. Uh, but you just align it kind of like this, then you align this with the screws and you put this in the very middle over here. So it just goes in the middle. And then you put this, you align it, and then you put it right here in the middle as well. Go ahead and put the screws in. Uh, there is just this four, five, six screws here and then four screws for this piece. So, uh, and they send you all the screws over here. So we're just going to put the screws, uh, starting with this one over here and then we're going to make our way around and put all the screws. Uh, if you have a 2021 Model 3, uh, as you see, this has got Velcro, but yours probably just has a pin. So check your dash, and if you have pins like this everywhere, then all you have to do is remove this screws, so two screws, install this uh, from here uh, on the top, and that's it. That's all you have to do is remove this and then install this on the top, um, so all throughout all the Velcros. So this works is very straightforward. You take a pry tool and you pry this side panel out, and this is exactly the same step for any Model 3 or Y that you have. Then we're also going to be removing this side door panel by, again, using the pry tool. It just pops out like that. Ours is probably loose because, as I said, so many times, so many times. Uh, but yours might be a little tight. Just use a pry tool like this. Then go ahead and do that exact same process on the other side. Now, this dash is free to be removed, but if you have a Model 3 or Y that was built in Austin recently or a Shanghai, you might have another screw here, a torso screw somewhere over here. So take a look at it and then see if you find any screws here. If you do, then remove that torso screw. I'm not talking about this torso screw. There has to be one attached to this dash over here, kind of hidden right here. Take a look at that screw and then remove that. If you don't have that on older cars, you don't. Freeman build, I haven't seen one. Um, and then what you do is you simply then pop this out. Um, and another reason how you can find that uh, screw is also if you try to push this and it's just stubborn, it wouldn't go out, then you have something in here. For me, uh, as I have removed this so many times, this is super loose. As you see, it just pops out. Yours might do the same or you might require a little bit of force to remove it and 
this is it. So as you see, there is some pins that this is connected to, just pins over here. Now we need to safely put this aside and let's go ahead and remove the rest of the panels for this install. And I wanna remove the bottom door panel for the AMD cars. And to do that, you just have to remove this plastic screw. It is in a bit of an awkward position, but you can use a pry tool and that, that screw comes out. Then you can just reach underneath that panel and pull it up. And there are no more screws, it should just come right out. Now, if you have an Intel car, uh, it's a little bit more difficult because you're gonna have to reach underneath here and then remove those plastic fasteners that you see. So all of those you have to remove, there are four of them, and then let's go through that process now. Of those four plastic screws. You can use a pry tool to remove them. Once the panel is removed, you will see the LED light connector, which can be removed by pinching on the middle tab and pulling it out. Then the speaker plug can be disconnected by simply pulling on the plug. This is the difficult plug we need to remove for the cars with an Intel chip. You just have to pinch on the middle tab and while holding it down, pull the plug out. Then take the new harness and plug the male Tesla adapter into the female adapter of the new harness and then take the new male adapter and plug it into the Tesla computer. Make sure to align the plug straight to prevent bending Tesla pins. Again, this is super tedious and requires a lot of patience. At the end, it should make a complete circuit. So for the Intel cars, the wiring is pretty straightforward. As you can see, I have got this up and running here. How the wiring works is you're going to take that computer plug and bypass it into that difficult location. But that's about it. And you're going to just make this connection uh, here. This main one comes from the harness and this one comes from the actual screen. And you plug it into this box and that is it. For the AMD one, that is where you need to plug this into the blue plug located on the side door panel. And then this actually goes and plugs into the 12 volt uh, output. So there are two locations for that. There is one underneath that, uh, the charger, the front charger, and there is one in the cup holder. So let me show you how to make that connection on an AMD car. But for Intel, you don't need none of that. It has power built in on the Intel one. Now let's talk about the AMD wiring. Don't freak out yet, I have everything open, but I will go show you how to open all of that uh, and make all of those connections. But essentially on the AMD one, we have one extra step, which is to connect to the power over there that you see. So we got a computer connection that is coming from here and that connection is plugged into this box. Uh, so you've got that computer connection. The other plug is directly going and plugging into this unit here. Then we got this extra plugs for AMD that, that are Intel plugs because it's AMD. We're not going to need it. You can tape those and we're just going to hide those. Then there is that one cable and that cable, we're actually tapping into the front wireless charger to get that power. Uh, so that's, that's how you can get power. Remember on the first version, as I showed you, it was a mess. We have to go to the front battery, connect it. You can still do that, but this is much, much easier and you just connect it through here. So let me show you how to make that connection and this connection on the AMD version. Let's just start with the computer plug. So this is the computer plug. And if you look at it over here, you'll see there is a blue female port there. So. What that is, that gives us all the communication that is required for this display. So we take this blue male plug and then align it over here. Um, and then we push it in. So let me show you here. So if you look at that, we align and then you'll hear a click when it goes in and that's it. So to get to that 12 volt, there are two 12 volt. There's one here for that cigarette lighter port. And there is one that is connected to this guy here. Uh, it's much, much easier to connect to this one in the front underneath the wireless pad. That is what is powering that wireless part. So there's a 12 volt outlet there. And to get to that, we just have to remove this top portion. It is really easy. Uh, you just have to pop this out and they're just using some clips to connect it. It feels like you're breaking it. You really aren't, but just be careful. And what we do is re essentially remove the side panels from both sides and this top one kind of just comes out. You can either use a pry tool to pry from the top, or if you look at it, you can also just go from the top and then start pulling this out. So you can prop this out like this as well, and it's already coming out. And as I said, it feels like you're breaking it, but you really aren't. And these are the clips that are connected to there, and then they just kind of come out. And that's what you do, just make your way around and uh, do that from both sides before you 
reach underneath here. You can also pull this just a little bit. There are some clips there as well. Loosen it. Go to the other side and do the same thing. As I said, we're doing the same thing on this side as well. So we're just going to reach under and then pull it out. The sound that it makes is a little scary, but this is the only way to do this. And then when you prop everything out, you, depending on if you have ever done this or not, this might be a little tight. And then essentially this whole part just comes out like that. So there is that 12 volt uh, wiring here. This is what we need to connect to, but this the whole thing just comes out, just leaving you with this shell. Now let's talk about how to make that connection to get that 12 volt from the central console area here. So after you remove that panel, there is that 12 volt connection that we see. So that is it, that is what we're going to use to bypass this cable so we'll get power. And for that, all you have to do is run this power underneath this carpet area. You can pop this out using a pry tool like this, just from the edge. There's just push pins that you can just pop it out. And then if you look at it here, this also opens and then you can fish the cable through there, through the carpet area, all the way from the front and bring it to the side. So let's just make this connection here from our side, but that's how you route this cable to that 12 volt. This connection is extremely easy. You just have to prop open this top part just a little bit and then we'll pulling it, just pull this out and that is it. There is not much to this. We're then just going to bypass this line. So we have got a male and female on this uh, plug here. So these are both females. Now we're going to bring the male plug and then simply plug this in. So when we do that, you'll hear a click and then this new end of the male plug goes and then simply plugs into the female port that you see here and simply plug this in. So, and then you will hear a click here as well when this goes in and that's about it. Just push this a little bit harder. Then you got a 12 volt here and then we got a 12 volt output as well. Now all there is left to do is ensuring that the wire is passed through the side here and aligning this and simply putting it in. So we would push this just inside, ensure that this wire is passing through here so we can make the connection and align everything and push down this dash from both sides. So I've aligned everything on this side. Let me go over there and align it and then we'll just push it down. Just look to make sure that there's no gap here and push this and we are good to go. Now we can put the side brackets and we're done with the install. Now we just need to make sure that the wire that came from here went through the bottom and then connected to this unit. Again, we'll hide this unit somewhere on the side door panel over here. So this is what that side looks like on the passenger side. As you can see, we got the gloss chiron fiber finish and the unit looks really good. Again, that middle part, they are still using the joint, you can tell, but overall it looks very integrated on this side as well. This is what it looks like on the driver's side. There is the air vent here. And of course that air vent is blocking, but there is the airflow coming directly from the top. I did a whole airflow testing on the last video, so please check that out. But it looks pretty integrated. Still have this annoying wall side animation, and I don't think it's gonna go away. All right, let's go over all the settings and everything that this offers. Just keep in mind that the camera is not doing a full justice of how this actually looks in real life. It looks really nice, bright, but uh, with all the glare and everything, uh, the camera might not showcase everything, how it really looks. But this is basically from the driver's distance. I did not want to zoom in just inside. This is what you would see sitting on a driver's seat here. So these are the fans. Uh, if you just look at it on the top, there are those lights. So you've got both of those lights turned on and that's what the Tesla is showing. Here you will see the alert, the parking brake, the seat belt, and this is for the CarPlay. So when we connect to CarPlay, I'll show you that. Uh, towards the right, you'll see speed and things that bug me a lot, right? Like MI slash H. We keep telling them, just get rid of that thing, put MPH. I don't know why, what is so hard. And it goes to 240 miles per hour. That's not right. So things like this, it's still there. We keep telling them, still there. Uh, but you see that here, you see the gear selection, 
Towards the left, you see the temperature, you see the power versus charge, and I'll show you here while driving what this looks like. Basically, it shows an indication of when you're accelerating versus decelerating, and of course, you got your battery percentage here. Uh, it shows the range, it shows the odometer, it shows the time. Uh, another thing, it says 12.26 a.m. It needs to be p.m., uh, and it is synced. It is 12.26 p.m. here. It shows the date. So. It shows everything, but there is still some bugs that they need to figure out. And one of the things that they changed was, if you remember on the older version, it looked like a, a old battery sign from the old phones that you used to see, like from iPhone 3. Uh, so they, they improved that to this version, which is a little bit better. And they made some changes to the UI here, but not too much. But in the main screen, that is what you see. You see the car logo here. And if I were to open the door, you see the door opening, and if I close the door, the door closes, the frunk, the trunk, everything, it, it shows right here, and it shows the car. This is a little bit brighter than what the Tesla is showing, but you know, kind of matches what that looks like. And if we were to put the car into drive, you'll see that the headlights are on on this animation, and then if I toggle the high beam light, you'll see the high beam light. So. They made some changes to the animation, which is cool. They're headed in the right direction there, but that's, that's it. That's everything you will see while you are driving. They also have an auto pilot indicator here. We'll show you what that looks like while we're driving on the road, but in a static version, that's everything that you see. Now, this next one, uh, this is for the Bluetooth connection. Uh, so we'll show you when we do the demo of the CarPlay and Android Auto. Same here, there is the CarPlay, but because this is not connected, uh, we can go back, Android Auto is the same thing. And then here is a settings. Another thing about this is you can't control this uh, display using the scroll wheel button, which is a bummer. There is only the touch screen version here, and that's what you see on the setting. Uh, you got, uh, if we go all the way to the top, you'll see on the model, uh, you can toggle between the red car, blue car, gray, black, you can do model Y, model three, hit okay. That changes the setting. You go to basis, this is language, time, temperature, time zone, brightness. Uh, you can do sync with the car. And right now I have a sync with the car. So if I were to change the brightness in the car, you see it toggles with the car, day, night, auto, and set up all fun. That's the whole ambient light and fragrance that we talked about last time. We, we don't need to go through that. This does not support it right now. So. There's no point in that, but in the future, if they make it supported, then that is where you do set up all fun and a whole bunch of other settings come up. But for now, this is it. The connection, there is that C-Link, which is for the CarPlay connection, and then there is the version here. And that's, that's about it. That's everything that this offers. Now, let's go back here. All right, so let's take this out on a road, like always, and let's do some testing of what we find. This is what the driving view looks like. I said earlier, there's that power versus regenerative braking. So that one is dynamic. That is new with this display. If you put the turn signal, you'll see that on a very big top right there in big bold. So that is working well. And um, the camera, again, is not doing too much of a justice, uh, but the graphic is kind of average too. It is not wow type of a graphic that matches Tesla's UI. So. This is what you see from the driver's view. I have the camera mounted right in front of me, and that is what I'm seeing. And uh, yeah, it is very much synced up with the Tesla's screen. So everything that I see on the Tesla screen, you also see here, now you get a view of the glare. So that's exactly what you see here with the glare. And it uh, does a pretty decent job of showing all the information. And as you see right here, if you pay attention to the rear tail light, so right now I'm not pressing on the brake, but the minute I press on the brake, that also shows that the, the car has the brakes applied. So that's dynamic, it shows uh, that information. Again, this is it. You don't get anything more than this, right? This is the, this is the one UI that it has. There is no other UI options. It's just a very simple graphics that shows all the information directly on your view. You're not gonna get anything else on this normal mode. One thing that I did wanted to test was if it shows autopilot information. So 
We're gonna give that a try here. So right now I have the FSD beta. So when the autopilot is available, it shows this gray here. Um, so that is the icon that you see. Uh, that means the autopilot is available for us to use. Um, that does not mean that the car is in autopilot mode. It just means that the autopilot is available to be used. Uh, so let's turn here and let me see. So I am going to put the car in autopilot. So only that max speed turned blue. This, this icon did not turn blue. So you can kind of tell that the car is in autopilot, but at the same time, it is not, the, that does not turn blue. And I think this has to do with the FSD beta uh, that I have instead of the normal autopilot. My other car has the normal autopilot without the beta. So it probably would show blue on the other car. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't see that on the last version, uh, but they say that you should be able to see it in here. Um, I didn't see that. So the autopilot does not really work uh, for my FSD beta. So I also wanted to show you the dark mode, which is basically it is a black background. So in nighttime, it shouldn't be as bright. You can still toggle the display, uh, the brightness on your Tesla, and that changes the brightness of this. You can still do that from the Tesla, but this is what the dark mode looks like. It's just black background and it doesn't hurt your eye as much at nighttime. Okay, let's talk about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And let's start with Android Auto here first because last time we didn't have Android Auto. So I have got an Android phone here and I have already connected this phone to the Tesla. So Tesla Model 3, and if you look at it, it says test phone. That's the Bluetooth I have connected. So right now I'm able to play everything from this phone and the Tesla's speaker will play uh, whatever I'm listening here through the Tesla's screen. So that's the first step you need to do both for iPhone and Android is to connect your phone via Bluetooth to the Tesla. Now we're going to connect the same phone to this display so that we can get Android Auto from here visually on the display, but the audio is gonna come out of the Tesla. So connect it to Tesla using Bluetooth, check. Now let's go ahead and connect to the screen. How this works is we have already connected to the Tesla Model 3 here. Now what we need to do is pair a new, and when you go over here, it says wall site for phone. That's what we need to hit pair, and it is pairing. It will ask for the pairing code, pair, and it is connecting and the screen just turned black. And this is the first time we're doing it. So it may take a little bit of time for it to recognize that is the, the Android Auto that pop up for just a little bit. That is how typically how the process works. And then you see right here, Android Auto is active and we have got Android Auto. So everything that you do on the phone, now it is going to be replicated here. And if we go to this, We'll see Waze, we'll see all those apps. Now, because I told you that we have connected here the Android phone, the test phone to the Tesla's Bluetooth speaker, all the audio, everything is gonna come out from Tesla's speaker, but the visual is gonna come out here. So you get both best of both worlds where you see the visual Android Auto here, but the audio, everything that the Android Auto is doing, all the turn by turn, is directly coming from Tesla because your phone is connected to both Tesla and this is screen. So let's see if we wanted to go to sheets. The audio is going to come out Tesla speakers. Feet. Turn left on Eden Road. There you go. So that came out directly from Tesla's speaker. That is how you can get around not having any lag. So now there is no lag in the audio between this and that. And you still get to have that crisp audio quality, but have an Android Auto here. So here is the navigation, actual navigation using the Android Auto, as you see, it's taking us to the address. Let's see how quickly it reroutes. So we're going to take a different route here and see if it recognized that we turn. Yep, it did, and it rerouted. So yeah, it's pretty decent for like a first implementation of Android Auto on a new device. It's going to be as good as your phone. So as you see the location updating in real time, 
doing a pretty good job, um, but it's gonna be as good as your phone. And um, yeah, it just acts as a normal Android phone for Waze. Uh, and you, you now see all of the information here on the top, the police and all the notification you typically see on a Waze. And of course our thing says using Waze on Android Auto. So that was Android Auto. Now let's try the iPhone. And the same deal, we have got an iPhone here. We're going to add a new device. So we'll hit start search. And it already found a site for phone. That is not what we want. We want the Shiva demo. So we'll do that and then it will allow us to uh, connect to that phone. That's pretty standard protocol with Tesla. I mean, it got a pairing request. So you have done this many times and we'll just allow everything. All of a sudden, that device is connected. And that's what you need to do first, is you need to make sure that your phone is connected to the Tesla, which it is connected now. So everything, the audio coming out of this phone will directly go to Tesla, no audio lag issue. We're not gonna mess with the audio on this device. We only need this device for visual. So there you go, now that is connected, let's go ahead and connect our iPhone to this device. Exactly the same deal as Android Auto. We're gonna go over here in Bluetooth and hit wall site for phone. And um, it will allow us to pair, which will hit yes, allow to sync, and then it's gonna ask if we wanna use CarPlay. And that's when we need to hit yes again. So it is connected, just give it a second. It will ask us if we wanna use CarPlay. That is screen went blank, use CarPlay. And that's it, it's pretty straightforward. Is going to update here in just a second and it will show CarPlay. There you go. We have got CarPlay now seamlessly connected. We also have Tesla Model 3 connected. That means the audio is going to come out of Tesla. The visual of the CarPlay is going to come out here. So now we can use a full CarPlay while not jeopardizing the audio at all. And this is an older phone. This is an iPhone 7 Plus and it allows you to do that. And this is your full CarPlay, just a standard CarPlay. You get all the buttons over here. If you push this, you'll see everything, the split view, and there's your CarPlay. And we can go to Apple Maps. We can minimize that. We can go to Waze, and we can just put wherever we wanna go. So let's say category, let's hit groceries, it's searching, it's found giant, and we hit go now. Let's go. And that Make a U turn. That audio is coming actually from Tesla. Remember, I told you earlier, we connected the phone directly to the Tesla's speaker. And now that audio is coming from Tesla's speaker. But the visual, we're seeing it right here. And this is going to update as we use the car and start moving. So you're going to see that navigation stop moving. There you go. So now we're going. We're gonna get out of this parking lot here. And in 400 feet, turn left on Eden Road. And that audio again, that's coming from Tesla. That's Tesla's a speaker. So if you get a phone call, let's say anything that you get in the CarPlay, the audio is gonna come out from Tesla's a speaker. So that's actually turn solves left on Eden Road. a big issue here which is really nice. Now we have demoed it both on Android Auto as well as the Apple CarPlay. And let's say if we pass this, let's see how quickly it updates. Yeah, it took a second, but it realized. Turn left. We are passed it. Yeah, it just depends on how good your phone's reception is too. Sometime we lose the reception on the phone and it may take it just a little bit, on but Road. there we go. So here you go. You have the full CarPlay here and it shows in a ways, which is of course, we wanna see the speed traps and everything, which in a quarter of a mile, I heard is coming to Tesla. Drive. And uh, we can go ahead and stop this navigation. And yeah, now we can bring up Google map and if we go to our CarPlay and bring Google Map, we can put any address here, New Holland Coffee, and it'll replicate on the screen.
There you go. And we have turned the audio off, but we can turn the audio on. And it, audio is set to alerts only. Only important instructions will be announced. There you go. At the next stop sign, turn right. And the audio is coming from Tesla. All right, so I've got my state-of-the-art airflow testing here uh, that we have used in many videos to get a gauge of how much air do we get. So of course, right now, everything is off. So the air conditioning is off. You're not seeing anything come up here. So now what we're going to do is blast our AC. So let's put it in 10 and let's start seeing that. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of airflow and this is directly hitting my face over here. So if I'm driving, if I blast my AC, I'll be able to feel a lot of air that's directly coming to my face. And of course, as we get closer, more air, as you can see. So even right here, that's where it would block the must AC on other displays. This is not doing that, especially over here. And as I told you, there's the airflow. You can feel it, the air coming from here. So it's coming from here and it's going over here. So you can feel a lot of air over here because of the design that they made where it doesn't block as much airflow going here. So even though there's a screen here, and of course you don't feel very much air here, but they are deflecting the air through here and kind of matching that with the Model S and X where you feel the airflow right here. And especially up top, very strong right here. So as you see, you still feel that airflow. Now we turn it on to speed four. So this is just the fan is speed four here and it over here you might see a little bit more but it's not coming as much and as we increase this to five six you start feeling the air and you see that it is coming through and as we get closer there's more air over here so Depending on what air speed that you put, <laughs> if you're going through extreme heat, your air speed is probably going to be 10 anyway, so you'll get a lot. I really like the integration part of this, right? It looks really nice. It looks very, very integrated as if it is in a Tesla Model S, like that front cluster. So the design, I really like. Another thing I like now is that they support Android Auto. The first version was a turn off for many people because there was no Android Auto. Now this version includes Android Auto, so that is a big plus. They also made some changes to the UI. I also really like that the dual Bluetooth setting now works with this with the Tesla screen so that you don't have to go from your phone to this screen to the Tesla screen. You can leave your phone connected to the Tesla screen and just connect your phone to this device. That way you get the ways, you get all the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, the visuals on the screen and audio comes out of the Tesla. If you didn't know that you had connected to both, you would think that it's just seamless integration. And once you connect it, you forget about it and it is always connected. Uh, so that's all good news. Uh, they made some changes, they made some improvement. Another big one is that the first generation of this display that we tested did not have Intel capability. So older car like my Tesla Model 3 that we just tested here could not be connected to this display because it was only for the AMD cars which have been newer cars so we installed it on our Model Y last time so now they made it compatible for both Model 3, Model Y, older car, newer car. Of course it does not work for Highland so those of you who have Highland this is not going to work. Uh, they are working on other displays such as the T6 display and they say that it is compatible for Highland. I also like that they now offer carbon fiber. So this is a real carbon fiber glossy finish that I got. Uh, instead of just having that black and white, it also have a carbon fiber option now. Now moving on to my dislike. I do not like that it comes in two piece. You have to connect it into that middle part. Maybe it is not as visible, but when I look at it, I could see that gap, I could see that connection. So that is one big dislike that I have. I also do not, like the graphics and the UI. And I don't think they will ever change that because it looks very similar to the one that was on the previous version. And I just wish they made it better. They made it more modern, simplistic, like the Tesla's UI. But I'm not too confident they are gonna change the design anyways to, to incorporate that. So I do hope that in the future, other versions come out with the Tesla looking UI, but I don't have much faith that they're gonna develop this any further on the UI side. If you don't care too much about the UI, then this is a great solution. I mean, it's a nice, nice instrument cluster that sits in your front. 
Another dislike that I have for this is that it is big, right? Which is good. And on the, the, the negative side is it blocks a lot of airflow. Even though with the curved design over here, uh, it's not as much, but it's still, it blocks a lot of airflow. So that is a negative. So what do you all think about this instrument cluster display? Would you get it for your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y? What does it have? What does it not have that you're hoping for? Of course, it does not have any of those front camera or blind spot warning, none of that. And I don't think they will incorporate that ever into this design, but, it does have some benefit to seeing those critical information directly in front of you and having that constant sight of all of that information, including speed, turn signal, everything that you need to know in front of your eyes. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as I said in the past, any engagement helps, like, subscribe, comment, share, anything. You wanna put a smiley face in there, that helps us rank higher in YouTube's algorithm. That means we can make more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. I'll be back again with another Tesla accessory.